You're doing a wonderful job. I'm even going to buy it. Really? Really. <laughs> um, how much does he get for these things, do you know? What is it, 30, 35? Yeah, um, are you going to put it inside or in your yard? Outside, in the garden. Okay. Butterflies in the garden. Yeah, one of the things that I really like about his stuff here is that, you know, you can see the individual parts. You can tell that's a spark plug. Right. You know, I mean, they it's not suggested all... that we not paint over that so that that's... Yeah, I got to get some So that you can tell what it is. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's, well, it's kind Eleanor of a... suggested. You know, a link to the real world, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. You know, what do you think? Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> well, I hadn't thought about it. Okay. Well, I like like this little way going around. I thought it was pretty nifty in this right up here. They kind of look like arms. I'm not exactly sure if they're arms or their eyes, but I still like it. I like the butterfly. I just thought it looked like a space plane or something. And if we were gonna go into like a war with aliens or something, we need a lot of them. So decided to paint one. Okay, hey, everything's an artist. You're Eleanor. Hi, I'm Eleanor. <laughs> <laughs> so are, are you Mrs. Dr. Evermore? Yes. <laughs> and what's that like? Would you describe him as a content person? Um, no, I wouldn't call him content. I think an artist who's constantly going to have change is not going to be content. They're going to keep, their mind's going to keep thinking it's got to be a little better, got to be a little different, got to be a little different color, some something. He's never totally content. He is for the first time in his life doing totally exactly what he wants to do. And that's create. Uh -huh. And what's hard is he needs more welders. He, he's got a mind full of, he should be making furniture. He should be making waterfalls. There's, there's things that he hasn't been tapped in. They've been in the past. I have a, a wonderful um, beds and dining room sets and things like that he's designed uh -huh. and made. And I'd like to see him go towards that again. Away from the bugs and more towards something in there. Maybe the fences are what's going to start it. I don't know. Out of total depression, he started that. And then out of my total depression, I started working with him. Out of Troy's total depression of being here, he started the robots. So is this a therapy thing? It's or? been a therapy, strictly, yeah. And has it been an effective therapy? It, it's been an effective therapy, but then it uh, comes to a point where it's taking over and not giving it, didn't give enough free time. It's kind of taken on a life of its own? It took a life on its own, and the three of us stand back and we thought, have to relearn who each other are. This is some of Troy's work here. I is he around? His first. No, I wish so much he was. You miss him, huh? We went to the Kohler Conference. I, I don't know what that is. Outsider meant. Arts. Okay. Okay, and it, it was national, and it was, what did they call folk art? And what did they call outsider art? They really have a clash. Oh, that... And that can Troy turn into such a doesn't want to, he doesn't, hasn't been doing any art. He's going to school for art. And he says, Mom, I want to go. I thought it was too wonderful. It was an education thing for Troy. It's a one-time real big shot for him to, he wants to come back now. He wants to come do artwork here. So okay. I'm thrilled. All right. These are lover gates. I got them on the truck. We'll have them off here in a second, okay? That's, those are lover gates. There's the a, a what kind of gates? A love it gates. Uh huh. Fountains. That's the name of them. Love it. Okay. And the other ones that are out here are grace gates. Uh, but that's an example of a couple jails that I had. And I couldn't stand them, and I got to release the spirits in the jail. So I cut them up and made them into something that you wouldn't. Uh, With the hearts and all that. Yeah. Release the spirits of some of these. The poor guys probably had to hold their urine for a long time because it kind of, you know, not too good. Those cube jails that were, you know, around 1870. Yeah, it seems like you're concerned a lot about with legacy and, uh, you know, and passing something on. Yeah, my main purpose is we're going into a plastic society and all those computers and stuff. I see a lot of potential in things and I see nothing but positive. Yeah, I won't even see the negative in you, you see, I only see good things. But There's no negative part, in me. No, but I only look at positives, you see. Uh -huh. And I like to beat my dear brothers out of the, in the scrap business out of the metal and put it into some kind of art or something, you know. 
so I, I do produce an awful lot of stuff. You're very prolific. Yeah, this would be how many years worth of work here that you got? Oh, there's only, uh, oh, it's, I've been on this site since 1984. Uh-huh. I must have done 2,000 ton of, uh, of uh, material. That's four million pounds of stuff. Wow. Yeah. Sounds like you don't sleep much. No, I don't. Yeah, and I, uh, I'm not drinking whiskey and chasing wild women like you, you used to do. Like I used to do, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. In, in my previous life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Forever Tron was a uh, device that was built by Dr. Evermore around 1890 in theory. The equipment is on the uh, right side of the machine. It was all built by Thomas Edison around 1882, and the equipment on the left side, uh, that, those are Edison bipolar dynamos. So Edison's spirit is contained in the yes. Forever Tron as yes. well? Yes, yes. Also incorporated in this is the uh, decontamination chamber which was used uh, in the Apollo space mission. And these are not all claves here. And see this rubber on there? They were mounted in the side of the trailer and you passed the moon rocks through that. You see, that's what it's all about. So there's a lot, lots of, everything is a historic thing, but never any distorting of the original historic thing. That he believed that he could perpetuate himself back into the heavens on a magnetic lightning force beam. Okay. Inside a glass ball, inside a copper egg. And thus he built this forever tribe, uh, which he went up the spiral staircases and went across and got into the egg. Uh -huh. The ground people scampered around, turned all the switches on, and they fired him back into the heavens on his magnetic lightning force beam. All right, see the egg will go up and down on an air cylinder, and then these will these will drop like that with the with the lasers going against it, so you get the effect that it's it's. Uh, Powering off. But again, here, artistic wise, you can see in here you got these curved arches and circles, and that r real rusty thing right there that gets all wrapped with copper. Uh huh. That's the magnet. Well, you run your eye down through here, and these are all set, but you see that big generator in there. You see the curves? Oh, circles, yeah. Curved circles. And, uh, so it ain't too bad. The telescope is for those that don't believe. That's correct, now. The non believers, Dowdy Thomas, in the yeah, and they'll be able to look through the telescope and see whether well, you made it there or not if you want to ride along. <laughs> Do you call yourself an artist? No. Well, what, how, well, how do you I, describe yourself? Oh, if you had to put yourself that, in a category. Pooey on that. Uh, the thing of it is, is I had some friend of mine who's a senior art professor at the university and he said, well, you're going to come work at your studio, and I got all these damn things. <laughs> I'm coming home work at my junkyard, something like that. You know, he said, you better watch out, people will, will take you seriously. So th this is, a <laughs> uh, you know, this uh, art business, you know, I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, they hang all these names on you, so I don't care. Well, last weekend we had all these uh, people from... Uh, Kohler here, and they've been intellectually uh, what outside art is. My gosh, it took four days, and I don't think they had killed confidence in anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, should we cl classify this stuff as folk art? And oh, it's really a humorous thing, you know. Somebody likes to draw pictures, just because they drew a lot of pictures automatically, is he a great artist? You know, no, I'm pooty on all this stuff. I mean, who's making these judgments? If you like something, you like a little piece and it speaks to you or something like that, that's good enough. I'd rather have a little old lady in tennis shoes from Nebraska over here and so oh, I like that thing that's looking at me. She's honest in what she's saying and ain't being, she ain't being told uh, by somebody in some gallery and, uh, you know, looking down their noses or something, you know, gee whiz. I got this, uh, that old fire truck down there, if I could find a young guy that, that would uh, get uh, on it with it, uh, I'd like to uh, convert that B-12 uh, fire truck into a juggle nutter, which is a... Uh, a juggle nutter? Yeah, that's uh, uh, a fountain of youth peanut machine. Well, I want people fighting like mad to get these peanuts that come off the juggle nutters. 
Okay. I've got a peanut roaster there. Uh -huh. Because they want these peanuts. They're just desperate because if you eat these peanuts, it makes you more youthful. And you well, get to look younger. Oh, I got the peanut machine right over here. It's a, uh, about a 1900 one. Okay. Uh, uh, production one. Nothing like fresh roasted peanuts. Oh, I love them. Well, I got some cannons over here that shoot potatoes and stuff like that. Oh, okay. But these are air operators, some kind of operation that will poof these. We'll have to surround this thing and protect this because these are youthful peanuts. But so our the type of equipment that will do that will be these peanut shooters, see. Circle the wagons. <laughs> yeah. I'll have them all the way around there. I don't know, probably eight or ten of them, they'll all load them up with these peanuts and they'll fire them out at people, you know. See, and it's mobile, it'll be a real nice thing, they can drive in parades and stuff like that, you know? Oh, that would be wonderful. For sure. sure. Or shoot, at the, you know, shoot peanuts at the crowds lined up on the street? Yeah! Or oh, we can get it sort of go at least 60, 70 feet, anyway. You just see this other, uh, the Overlord Master Control Unit over there, that's got uh, uh, seven love guns on it. Love guns? Yeah! What, what do they shoot? You know, they're, uh, they're cannons. Okay. And then, then as you go up on the upper level, um, the, the people set in the uh, in their cannoneer position with the periscopes and look out. And if somebody's not smiling, you'll be able to where you see that thing that's not that thing looks like a boat air, but there's a pipe that comes down to the cannon. You'll point it at them and shoot them with a laser. Okay. And uh, make them smile is all you're doing, you know. But you love them, yeah. <laughs> Just. He's yeah. making them smile, okay. Yeah. Yeah, nothing around here is threatening, but I think the suspicion is that, well, when the overlord is done, then there ain't nothing more I have to do. But so something keeps coming up all the time because you keep getting more junk. Yeah, I mean, this is yeah, a very special place on this planet. And uh, I really envy Tom that You know, his drive to create all this stuff, you know, and this this world, you know, that you know, I think people drive by on this highway all the time and they have no idea what lays beyond these walls, you know. I think you know, maybe there's just a couple fanciful sculptures outside there, but, you know, those that take the time to, you know, come through the gates and, you know, see the Forever Tribe, to see all these creatures. To, you know, just you know, wander into another world. It's it's really something very special. Um, you know, and I sense from talking to Tom that you know part of the legacy he wants to pass on is to you know have people look at things and not see them the same way. You know, not as junk or something to be discarded, but you know, to see all the potential and all the, you know, the wonderfulness and, you know, these things that our society has discarded.